What I'm struck by first off is the quietness, actually, because you come in here and you realize that once upon a time, probably not that long ago, uh, this would have been the scene of quite frenzied, noisy activity. Uh, guys in uniforms sliding down poles, rushing towards engines. And Le Dre has really gone right against all that and created something completely other. And there's also a huge sense of expectancy. They seem to be waiting for something. Waiting for the owners? We don't know. But certainly waiting. Mark had seen the fire yes. sign outside. And we love we love old buildings, yeah. so immediately we thought oh, that would be nice. And then Caroline saw the advert on the on the doors, came in here, and this is just. I think it's amazing, remarkable. I think actually. the building is remarkable, but I think the de attention to detail. I've never seen anything like this. Why would you want to make it look as though it's just been frozen for a long time? It's like a, it's like a memory, isn't it? It's a memory, it's a childhood memory. That's what it is. There's an element of, of why about it, but it's, it's coming over to me as very sort of dead men's clothes, I think. And it's a very instant reaction that they all look very lived in apart from the tailor's dummy there. Um, it looks like something is sort of speaking about all the time and effort that has gone into the making of clothes, even though so many don't appeal to oneself. It is very sad seeing all these used things. The ceiling, the floor, are all part of the piece making a complete space that you can be a kind of giant looking at it takes a lot of thinking about because it reflects back on yourself because it's not a one-liner is it this is a very subtle in-depth look at, at kind of commercial commercialization of clothes isn't it it's very serious it's not a trivial piece of work at all the dust which you as a human being can see it just below eye level. I don't know, it kind of um, deframes it in a way. It looks like kind of a laundry that's the Mary Celeste of laundries. But it also says something about recycling of clothes. The word rag trade doesn't come from making clothes. It comes from recycling clothes, which has been going on in Europe since the 11th, 12th century. It's how Milan made all its money, and it still goes on. I mean, the shipping of clothes to Africa, for example. I think there's going to be a lot more of that in the next 20 or 30 years, as we don't have fuel to move things around in the way we did. I'm all for it myself. Well, we've been here probably longer than anybody, uh, about 35 years this year. Pretty established in, in London in that sense, and we sort of believe in this street as a interesting type of uh, specialist street. We sell the sort of better end of menswear with a twist on the classic sort of look for people like clothes that are just a bit interesting and not too stay, not too formal. And we're not high fashion, but we are fashionable. I learned this job in Pakistan when I was 10 years old. I just start from stitching and then stitching by machine, stitching by hand and ironing. Shorten slip from the top of shoulder, shorten collar, shorten the sleeves, shorten the, the length of jacket. Nine hours a day, 54 hours a week.
the English they are more casual. Well, when I say casual, they don't bother so much to dress. But in Italy or the Italian, I don't know if it's the culture or it's a personal, they want to dress smart. Matching shoes with a belt or if you wear in a suit, you have to be a matching tie, you must have match with the socks, they say. You know, the colours, so everything makes look uh, more elegant. Well, some people walk in and walk out because they just find it too claustrophobic. There's too much here. Other people just love places like this because they like to rummage and spend time. I've been here 14, 15 years. I couldn't tell you what's going to sell tomorrow. I get 16-year-old boys. I get 75-year-old men. I get everybody and everybody. There's no one type of person that comes into my shop. Well, I think he was just really paying attention to detail, really, and all the different fabrics. But I have to say, it wasn't what I was expecting. Well, I, was, I wasn't expecting it to be three sort of um, still lives of miniature clothes and everything. I, I thought it was going to be something completely different. I was impressed by what he did, and the little um, ties like this, and the little shirts, and little things. But what, what's it all about? I don't know. He's an artist. There must be an artist to do these things. Crazy or not crazy, be an art is an artist. But uh, you should explain to us the people go in and say, "Look, I did this because," but he didn't. That was absolutely mind blasting. I swear, I've never seen that kind of stuff. You know, especially the the, the jackets with the shirts. Yeah, how he how he fixed the, the the shoulder, how he fixed the collar how he cut it that was absolutely amazing you know that's very hard to fix that I don't think he was trying to create a fashion story I think he was trying to show a story of sort of shops and the fashion industry in its different states I think he just was creating a piece of visual art without trying to impress anybody on anybody his views on anything in particular didn't strike me that way but the look was correct. I mean, he got it right, definitely. I think there is part of him that is fascinated by clothes and apparel and the human need for such things. But I think there may well be another part of him, the more rebellious, the more bohemian side, perhaps, that is saying, actually, we just kind of clobber ourselves with all this stuff. And why do we need to be so sort of rigid and uh, costumed? Um, why don't we just get down to who we really are? We live in an age of exhibitions full of explanations, full of captions on the walls telling us, especially in museums, um, everything we need to know, or they think we need to know, about the art. Actually, we need to make up our own minds. We need to get to know the piece and have a silent interaction with it. And so it's very refreshing to come in here and to realize that Le Dre has no truck with that kind of thing at all. And he's leaving the installation to speak for itself. I think we over-intellectualize art, and especially the reading the brochure to this. There's one sentence in it that just made me laugh, it's so preposterous. And I just like the idea that people just come up with cool little ideas and then just go to extremes to finish them off. You know, you've got to have a certain left-field mind to do something like this. The sort of bloody-mindedness, almost, to go to that effort. And this is basically a very bloody-minded thing, but it's wonderfully optimistic and sort of um, uplifting. It links up with, of course, 
some of the oldest genres in Western art um, because it's still life in a way, this whole installation and still life painting in particular is very often linked with the whole notion of what was once called vanitas which is to do with the fact that everything finally goes you will die, your stuff will disappear um, nothing is nothing is permanent Mm-hmm. <laughs>